All right, welcome back. Hope you're having a great week. Today we're continuing our Let's Learn ABA series with positive and negative reinforcement. One of, if not the, most basic concepts in ABA, yet still misunderstood. So as always, we're going to make it simple, digestible, and memorable. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like, and most importantly, subscribe. RBT materials, check out btexamreview.com. BCBA and BCABA materials, check out behavioranalyststudy.com. When you pass your exams, please let us know so we can include you in our Sunday shout out. As always, work hard, study hard, let's learn ABA. So reinforcement, simply put, we're adding or removing a stimulus to increase or maintain future behavior. A response happens, you add or remove a stimulus, it increases future behavior, you've delivered reinforcement, okay? The key here is future behavior. Remember, we're not affecting current behavior. It's all about what happens in the future. So we're going to go over positive and negative reinforcement, different aspects of reinforcement, conditioned versus unconditioned reinforcement, and then socially mediated versus automatic reinforcement. Let's start with positive reinforcement. What is positive reinforcement? Well, when a response is followed by the presentation of a stimulus, which increases future responding. In other words, you add a stimulus and increases future responding. Response happens, you add a stimulus, responding responses in the future increase, you've just successfully pulled off positive reinforcement. Very basic, very straightforward. Again, the key here is future responding. What matters? Well, the length of time between the response and the presentation of the stimulus matters. You want to add the stimulus as close to the response as possible. Environmental conditions matter. It can affect the potency of reinforcement and what is and isn't reinforcing. And then motivating operations matter, right? They can establish or they can abolish consequences. Reinforcement is a consequence. We can't forget that, okay? It follows a response. The response occurs then a consequence. Response occurs, then reinforcement, okay? It does not affect the current response, right? It affects future responses. We do not define reinforcement based on topography or preference. You only identify a stimulus as a reinforcer once you have determined it has an effect on behavior. If you do a preference assessment and the learner indicates they like something, just because they like it doesn't make it reinforcing. It's only reinforcing if it increases future behavior. Very important to remember. So last time, positive reinforcement. We are adding a stimulus following a response, which increases future behavior. So what is negative reinforcement? Well, it's going to be just the opposite. You're going to remove a stimulus following a response, which is going to increase future responding. So negative reinforcement can sometimes be misunderstood. It's simply the same idea. It's a consequence that is going to increase future behavior, but instead you're removing the consequence, not adding it. So think escape, think avoidance. The length of time between the response and the removal of the stimulus continues to matter. Environmental conditions matter and motivating operations matter. Positive and negative reinforcement are entirely similar other than one you're adding, one you're taking away. Reinforcement is still a consequence. It does not affect the current response. It affects future responses. We don't define reinforcement based on topography or preference. We define it based on its effect on future behavior. Again, positive reinforcement. We're adding a consequence. It's increasing future behavior. Negative reinforcement. We're removing a consequence. It's increasing future behavior. It is that simple. We do not need to overthink these terms. Okay, If you're delivering reinforcement, if you're using reinforcement, you are increasing future behavior. The only thing you have to ask yourself afterwards is, was it positive or was it negative? In other words, did I add something as a consequence or did I take something away as a consequence? Important aspects. So let's just go over a few very important aspects of reinforcement. First, immediacy. Reinforcement needs to occur as close to the response as possible. Even a one second delay can reduce the effectiveness. You might have heard the term contiguity, and that just means the closeness okay, of the two. So the response occurs, reinforcement has to occur immediately if possible, 
if not immediately, then as close to immediately as possible. Again, even a one second delay can reduce the effectiveness. If you're waiting 10, 15, 20 seconds to deliver reinforcement, it's just not going to be the same. Now, how, what about discriminative stimuli? What about SDs? What about our antecedents? Well, SDs start to gain the ability to evoke responses when in the presence of reinforcement. In other words, an antecedent occurs, a response follows the antecedent, you deliver reinforcement, or in the future, in the presence of that SD, the behavior is more likely to happen. Why? Well, because in the presence of that SD, the learner has learned they're going to receive reinforcement, or at least that reinforcement is available. So you can see that consequences affect future antecedents. If you want to make something, if you want to make an antecedent event into an SD for reinforcement, then you need to reinforce responses in the presence of that SD. For example, if I say, sit down, the learner sits down, I deliver reinforcement, and they continue to sit down in the future, then S the SD of sit down has now gained the ability to evoke that response because the learner has learned that in the presence of the SD of sit down, reinforcement is available. That's much more high level for RBTs, but BCBAs need to understand that concept. Make sure you understand what that means. Motivating operations, we have entire videos on motivating operations, MOs, increase or decrease the value of reinforcement, and then automaticity. Automaticity simply says, the learner or subject does not even know, need to know that reinforcement is taking place for reinforcement to work, okay? All day long, your behavior, my behavior, we're being reinforced and we don't even know it because we don't have to know it. That's what automaticity is saying. What about unconditioned versus conditioned? Well, this is also pretty straightforward, right? Unconditioned are also considered primary reinforcers. They're unlearned, they're unconditioned, there's no learning history, it's innate. However you want to look at it, okay, that's what we're talking about when we talk about unconditioned or primary. There's no learning history, and yet these stimuli still have reinforcing properties. Sleep, food, sexual activity, warmth are just among some of those very common unconditioned or primary reinforcers. Given long enough, sleep and food will function as reinforcement. You don't need to learn that. Now, conditioned or secondary is just the opposite. These are learned. They're conditioned. They were previously neutral. And at one point, they were paired to gain properties of reinforcement. Commonly, praise, tokens, money, dinosaur toys, right? All these things at one point had no value, okay? If you've ever worked with maybe young learners or maybe even uh, later learners, okay, who don't understand the value of money, it's never been paired with anything right? Tokens need to be paired with something. They have to be conditioned to gain those properties of reinforcement. Most commonly, we'll pair a neutral reinforcement or ne neutral re a neutral reinforcer or a neutral stimuli with an unconditioned reinforcer to create a conditioned reinforcer. So understand the difference, okay? Again, pretty straightforward. Just, just know that unconditioned and primary are the same thing and conditioned and secondary are the same thing. And you can create condition and secondary reinforcers through pairing. Socially mediated versus automatic. When we think about socially mediated, all right, this is, these are consequences or in this case, reinforcers that involve a second person. It, it takes a social being to deliver the reinforcer. Ordering your favorite meal, right? You have to order from a waiter or you have to order on the phone. Somebody has to take your order, okay? Receiving a Christmas present. Somebody's giving you the present. Praising good behavior. You're praising somebody. These are all socially mediated. Automatic reinforcement occurs independently. It occurs independent of social mediation. There's nobody else. Think alone. Cooking your favorite dinner. It's just you cooking, right? Singing your favorite Christmas song in the shower. You're just alone singing your favorite song scripting your favorite television show. Nobody's delivering reinforcement for scripting your favorite television show. It's automatic. It occurs independent of social mediation. Quick refresher. Okay, reinforcement. Again, very straightforward, yet a building block for everything else you will ever learn 
and ever do with ABA. So it's important you understand this cold, okay? Adding or removing a stimulus to increase or maintain future behavior. What are our important words here? Adding, positive. Removing, negative. Increase, future behavior. Not current behavior, future. We want to reinforce as close as possible to the target behavior. Reinforcement increases behavior. Positive means add. Negative means remove. Fantastic. Thank you for watching our Let's Learn ABA series. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out btexamreview.com and behavioranalyststudy.com. As always, work hard, study hard. We'll see you soon.